Welcome traders to the last weekly live market and trade analysis session for 2022. Just as a matter of housekeeping, I will be offline uh, until the 12th of January. That's when the next uh, live market and trade analysis session will be in the new year. Before we jump into today's charts, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most pertinent to today's discussion, uh, the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. And so for those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Like I said, my name is Patrick Munley, and after I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, basically giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I had not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing and extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual to becoming a purely process-orientated individual. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for two or three markets that I'm actively tracking for the trading day in front of me. And I share these through the Tickmill Trading View account and on the Tickmill uh, Expert blog. I also run Tickmill's eMini Strategy Group uh, on Facebook, where I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre market thoughts for the cash trading session ahead in New York, giving my bias for the S&P 500 for the trading day ahead, specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have now delivered just over 6,000 points of profit since we launched the group in April 21. The second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Tickmill Futures Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment 
On a daily basis, I share an in-depth insights analysis and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the New York Cash Trading Session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform, helping traders to develop a consistent approach to navigating the markets, and most importantly, the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Let's jump into today's charts before we get going. As always, if you have any questions or if you have a chart you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in my presentation, feel free to drop that into the chat and I'll come back to any questions at the end of the session and I'll give you a view on any instruments uh, that you'd like me to take a look at. So S&P 500, E-mini futures contract, traded to our target level. We were looking for a test of 41.28. We got that this week, spiked through, ran as high as 41.70s on that, uh, that softer than expected CPI print. And then we got the anticipated reversal. I shorted into this spike and eventually took out 95 points from this move to the downside. So what we're looking at now is a potential new pattern uh, to emerge. Initially, what we're ideally going to see is a three-way corrective move here that um, would see us potentially test back down into 39.40 versus that 40.90 swing high. So what we'd be looking for here is this type of scenario to play out, uh, get a break of the, the trend line here, which uh, ideally would prove to be a false break. Uh, so if we can get into that 39.40 target zone, and from there I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side, looking for the next leg to the upside, where we'd be thinking about a move up towards the 4,200 level as the, uh, the next upside objective for this move. Now, important to be aware that we have uh, options exploration in the US tomorrow, something like $3.9 trillion worth of options are rolling off. And the pin price, this essentially is the price at which most of that options interest will expire at, is the 4,000 level. So what I'd anticipate is that we will trade around this 4,000 level into options expiration. And then we could get a, a push lower into the close on Friday to test that 3940 level. So what I've been looking for is uh, as markets open up on Sunday night or we uh, start the cash trading session in New York on Monday, any move into that 3940 that acts as support, uh, I'll be looking to buy that for a an end of year move higher in terms of stock, that so-called Santa rally uh, phenomenon, which we uh, will be looking to, to play out. Now, the caveat is that any break of the support here at 3,900, I would suggest all bets are off and we will trade meaningfully lower. And when I say meaningfully lower, we have a level in the market certainly one that will will attract uh, a degree of interest is going to be uh, what's known as the JP Morgan collar. They have a, uh, a an option structure in the market, and that would suggest that we could test down into the 38.35 as the next downside objective. And from there, we could then trade meaningfully lower to actually test this prior support zone into the 3700 level. So, <coughs> excuse me. So the key really heading into the back ends of this week and the beginning of next is going to be this zone here. And we will want to see that 3,900 at a minimum defended. If it breaks, I will be looking to engage on the short side, looking for a move down to target uh, these key, key levels to the downside. We have 37.93 monthly projected range support. And like I say, we have that 38.35 which is the JP Morgan collar. And then below there, we'd be thinking about a move back down to 3,700. But my first area of interest is going to be as we hold this uh, 4090, 3940, and we'll see if the buyer step back in there. Moving to the NASDAQ, similar setup as usual with these equity indexes, we tend to get uh, similar scenarios developing across the board. So. What we're looking at here in the NASDAQ, actually we have a nice uh, midpoint of the channel here coinciding with the equality objective. So we have 11,585 as the target zone for this move, this corrective move, potential corrective move, I should say. 
So as the high volume node acts as resistance, we look for a move down into this 11,580s. We've also got daily projected range support there. So again, we look for bullish reversal patterns from that area. And uh, initially we target a move back up into the pivot there, swing high 12,070. But if we can get through there, then we'll be looking for an extension to the upside uh, to retest, certainly think about a retest of these price cycle highs, 12,338. Similar scenario in terms of the invalidation level here. Um, that This invalidation level that I had marked down here was for this target zone. The target has been hit, so we adjust the invalidation level. I'm going to use this, uh, this 11,400 area. If we take this out on a closing basis, I'm going to suggest that we will be looking at a test of the trend channel support down to 10,930. Obviously, that would be a bearish scenario, bearish development. Uh, first port of call is going to be the equality objective. Do buy a step back in, defend that area. If they do, I want to be in on the long side. Looking at the Dow Jones, Another point, actually, I just want to raise with you uh, or something to make you guys aware of. Keep an eye on these weekly candles here. This, uh, If we do take out that 3,900 into the close tomorrow, that will be an outside reversal from this weekly trend channel resistance. We had a key reversal last week. We've taken it out, uh, taken the stops out above that level and are now seeing the potential for a significant reversal. So that would add credence to the, the downside if we take out that 3,900 on a closing basis. Certainly that weekly candle is worth paying attention to. Moving back to the Dow Jones. We are looking at an equality objective for the correction here, which would see us test 33,000, uh, 33,620. We also have the high volume mode here, 33,670. So similar scenario. What we're watching for is any move into this area, which for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side, and then we will be thinking, or certainly I'd be looking for a move up into that just ahead of 36,000, which is the top side of the channel that we're currently trading in. Similarly, my in invalidation level would be a break of the support here at uh, 33,450. Again, pay attention to this weekly candle close because that is uh, certainly looking ominous at this stage. Obviously, we have two, two trading sessions to go before that will be confirmed, but do pay attention to that and I'll be highlighting that uh, if we do get those outside reversals in uh, future videos uh, heading into next week. Moving to the DAX, what do we have here? We are looking for a three-wave corrective move to test and hold now, support, the support has raised. This is the equality objective, I took well, the symmetry swing, I referenced this last week. So this is our wave one, our wave two low here. So we project our wave two from our potential wave three high, which we're going to use as the 14,670. So that gives us uh, a symmetry swing support at 13,960s. Also this prior height before this, uh, this breakout candle here. So any move into this area, we want to engage on the long side. And we will be thinking initially, five equals one is the minimum upside objective for the move. So that should see us trade into 14,800 as the next upside objective for this, uh, this move in the DAX. Again, though, guys, I just want to keep you uh, keep this in mind. Watch this weekly candle close also looking ominous, but not as weak as those or, or the strength of that reversal. Not to my mind anyway, not as strong as the ones that we're potentially seeing in the U.S. equity indexes. And to be honest with you, the DAX has outperformed uh, the U.S. markets of late. So moving to the Nikkei, we are looking for an equality objective versus our swing high here at 28,720. Looking for a test now into 27,165 from there. Again, watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. First port of call is going to be the high volume node, 27,935, and then the projected trend channel resistance coming in at 28,000. Thousands moving to the nifty. This one really has been the leader um, to the upside, certainly breaking out, making new cycle highs from that 2020 low, the post uh, the post COVID low there. So what we're looking for, similar setup again. We're looking for an A, B, C, a quality objective, 18,267. From there, we look again for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. 
And the type of scenario we'd be looking for then would be another extension here up through the, the swing pivot there into and above the prior cycle highs. And we would look to make new highs for this move. The area I would target here using this big retracement tool. So if we do hold the equality objective, and let me just change some settings there. If we can hold the equality objective, what are we doing? There we go. Our target is the 127 extension here. 19,200 is going to be our target for the Nifty if we hold our support zone here. 18,267. Moving to the bonds, TLT, the ETF, we have moved into the trend channel support. So we're now looking for a potential wave three low, our target zone for the next leg to the upside. So I'll be looking for any close back through 10870s on the upside, okay? Uh, four hour close through there, I want to engage on the long side. My target for the next leg to the upside is 110.98 as the next upside objective. Now, what we also want to be cognizant of, if we do fail the trend channel support, what are we looking at? Well, we have an equality objective to measure here, which would see us trade into the 105.70. So that's another area of interest. If we do pull back and take out the trend channel support, we look at 105.70s, the equality objective. Once again, from there, we'd be looking for bullish reversal patterns and a breakthrough, the trend channel resistance here to target that 110.98 on the upside. Moving to Forex and the dollar index came just shy of our target zone. We're looking, I'm looking for a 102.80, 102.70 test. So let's just update this here and do this. So I'm looking for that move into the 102.70, 102.80 area. And from there, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. First of all, we're going to look at trend channel resistance, 105.60s. Get through there, we have the high volume node, but ideally what we'd look for is a retest of this resistance here at 107.80s for the dollar index. This stage, it would take a closing breach really of that 102.50 to, uh, to really uh, in ignite the downside here and um but for now my view is that we will uh, we, we we should hold this this support area and see at least a corrective move similar setup obviously in the euro dollar euro dollar traded through our target we eventually got that test of 106 20s this week now i'm looking for the potential to see one more high up into this daily and weekly projected range resistance just above 107 uh, as we get into that area and we maintain this momentum divergence. Those of you here first times, important if we're going to trade counter trend that we want additional confirmation for momentum. So that means price is making a new high. We don't get a new high in the momentum study. And that gives us an opportunity then to watch for bearish reversal patterns to engage in a counter trend opportunity. And the first target for this move is going to be 104 on the downside. Sterling. Just shy of our 125 uh, target, trade, well, 124.40s. So I'm looking for one more push higher here in terms of sterling to test into, but fade uh, at that 125 handle. And then I'm looking for a three-way corrective move into daily trend channel support, which is coming in now, but just above 120. From there, we look to uh, engage on the long side. My target is going to be a 130 weekly trend line resistance test in terms of sterling. Moving to the dollar yen. Whilst we hold 134.40s as support, I'm looking now for a test of the equality objective versus this corrective pattern to give us a 138.80s from there, which were bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, looking for a move back down through 134.40s through the weekly projected range support and the double bottom 133.60s to an ideal 132 test. Swissy, similar setup really to the dollar index. I'm looking for it to just push into this trend channel, projected trend channel support. So 9180s is the area I want to, to see tested here and watch for bullish reversal patterns there. First port of call, obviously, is going to be a high volume load and trend channel resistance coming in at 9450s in terms of the Swissy. Dollar CAD. 
So the dollar CAD, we are looking for a test of the uh, corrective equality objective in terms of the dollar CAD into 137.90. So in terms of that trade, what we'd be looking for here as a trigger will be any move now. We don't have a, uh, a decent trend channel set up there. So what I'd actually look for is a move to test and hold support 134.90s. From there, watch for bullish reversal patterns, and we engage on the long side, looking for a move up into our target zone, 137.90s. Uh, the Aussie traded just shy of our 69 target. So I'm looking now for the Aussie to uh, any move that tests and holds the midpoint of this channel here, 67.20s. We look for that move up into the 69 target zone at this stage any loss of the support back to 6650s will be a bearish development and i'd be thinking initially about a move back down into the 6580s and ultimately a test of trend channel support which will be coming in now around the 65 handle before looking for the next leg higher kiwi dollar traded to our 65 target this week that we were looking for so i'm looking for three-way corrective move into test trend channel support now 6230s from there i'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side and we are then going to be targeting move up into the high volume load initially 6630s and weekly projected trend channel resistance coming in at 6760s rounding things out in the commodity markets gold traded into our target zone at the 1830s a nice reaction there 50 dollar move to the downside so i'm now looking for any corrective moves that test and maintain resistance at 1820s to set up a move to target the 1760s. Silver, showing a little bit of uh, relative strength to, uh, to gold here. I'm looking for us to ultimately test into weekly trend channel resistance, 2520s. So any corrective moves that test and hold trend channel support coming in in line with the weekly projected range support, 2250s, would be an opportunity to get in on the long side, targeting that $25 test. Crude traded to our 7037 target, a nice bullish reversal there from the double bottom. So we now have made the first upside objective back into the 7750s. So I'm looking for any pullbacks that hold support here at 7340s, 7350s. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to add to long positions. Looking for a move up into that wave for projected high at $83. And last but not least, Bitcoin. Right into our 18,000 target level and, uh, and actually tested through our 18,200 upside extension target. So I'm looking now for any corrective moves to test and hold 17,200. And from there, I'm looking to engage again on the long side and looking for a minimum retest of the price cycle highs, 18,300. And that concludes this week's whistle stop tour of the markets and charts that I'm watching and the levels I'm looking to engage. I uh, hope you've found that useful. Are there any questions? Uh, being between Forex and synthetic indices, which will you recommend for a beginner? Uh, I really, the S&P 500, e -mini S uh, the E-mini futures, or just the S&P 500, it's, uh, it's the benchmark for, for risk sentiment on a global basis. And I would suggest getting familiar with that. What I'm actually going to do there uh, is post the link to the Facebook group. All you have to do is request access and you can get my daily trade plan and trade levels for the S&P 500 uh, given in that group before the market opens in New York. Uh, let me get that link for you. And uh, you can, uh, like I say, request access one second. There we go. Should see that link now in the, uh, in the, the to the Facebook group. Uh, you can get the uh, my daily trade plan, get the specific levels I'm looking to trade and my, uh, my bias for the day ahead. I'll also post into the chat the uh, trading view ideas stream where I post the daily videos. 
that will uh, also be useful for you guys. So that's there. Can't see any other questions coming through at this stage. So if there aren't any further questions, I'm going to wrap this session up here, wrapping the year up. Uh, 2022 been a very strong year in terms of trading performance personally. So uh, looking now to rest up and recharge ahead of another year of playing the probabilities. For those of you who are here on a weekly basis, thank you for your support. Hope you find the content useful. Uh, like I say, you can request access to the Facebook group, follow my trading ideas through TradingView. And I bid you all a happy holidays and I look forward to seeing you on the 12th of January for the next installment of the weekly live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Mundley. Thanks very much, traders. And as always, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next year, thanks very much.